Hello and welcome to this video on saturated structural equation models. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with QuantFish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually talk about multivariate statistical methods including structural equation models, factor models, multi-level analysis and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel. Also don't forget to check out the description for additional resources including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter as well as courses that I teach for QuantFish. In this video I want to explain what we mean when we say a structural equation or factor model is saturated and more generally we apply this term also to other statistical types of analyses such as for example multiple regression. So what are saturated models? That is something that confuses many people because they think it's something bad, perhaps it's something that they shouldn't use, they don't really have a good understanding of why a model is said to be saturated and what implications, if any, that has for their analysis. So let's take a look at an example which is prototypical for factor analysis and structural equation modeling and is often used as an example of a saturated model. So here I have a single factor congeneric model of confirmatory factor analysis. Congeneric meaning we have three indicators or observed variables y1, y2 and y3 that are assumed to measure the same factor. However, with different factor loadings. So the factor loadings for those three indicators would be estimated as free parameters in this model and they could take on different values. And so this is called a single factor congeneric measurement model in classical test theory where we have unidimensionality but the indicators can have different loadings. Now if you have nothing else but only the single factor with its three indicators then that is a saturated model. Now what does this mean saturated? Saturated means this model has as many free parameters as there are pieces of information that can be used to estimate free parameters. And so in order to understand that, we have to understand what the parameters are of this model that are freely estimated, basically the unknowns that we want to find values for. And then on the other hand, we also have to understand what the knowns are. So what are the pieces of information that we can use to estimate unknown model parameters? On the side of the unknowns, the free parameters, we already saw that there are three factor loadings, lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3 shown in blue here. In addition to that, we also estimate residual or error variances for the measurement error variables or uniquenesses as we say sometimes, epsilon 1, epsilon 2 and epsilon 3. And again, each of these error variance parameters is a free parameter and can take on a different value from the other error variances. So those are the two types of parameters that we estimate here if we only consider the covariance structure, which we often do when we have a cross-sectional factor model or a cross-sectional structural equation model where we consider only a single group. So then we would only have the covariance structure potentially and so then we would only estimate factor loadings and the error variances. If you included a mean structure as well then you would have intercepts so additive constants to estimate as well but for now we're assuming that that is not the case and in fact the model would still be saturated even if we included a mean structure with the intercepts. So this means we have in total six free parameters in this model, three factor loadings and three error variance parameters. And so those are the unknowns. Those are the things that we want to estimate and that we want to find a unique solution for using, for example, maximum likelihood estimation methods in factor analysis. 
And now what are the knowns? So what are the pieces of information that we can draw on to find values for these parameters? When we only consider the covariance structure, so when we only model the covariance structure of a set of observed variables, then we would be using only the variances and the covariances of the y1, y2 and y3 observed variables. So this means with three variables you would have three variances in your data that you could use because there are three variables. Each variable has a variance that you can estimate or calculate based on your sample data. And then there are also three covariances because y1 could covary with y2 and y1 could covary with y3 and then also y2 and y3 have a covariance. And so those are the six pieces of information that can be used here to estimate the loadings and error variances. And you can see that we have exactly six pieces of information. Again, three variances and three covariances. And that's always the case whenever you have a model for just uh, three observed variables, you always have in the covariance structure three variances and three covariances. That's all you can use to estimate free model parameters. There's nothing else. And so in this case, we estimate six parameters and we have six pieces of information that we can use. So the model is saturated because we're using up all those variances and covariances. They're all used to estimate the loadings and the error variances. And it can be shown that the model is just identified, as we say, meaning we have just enough information. Those six pieces of information are just enough to estimate those six free parameters. Now, it's not necessarily the case that a model is identifiable. So to say when you have as many pieces of information as you have unknowns, there can be situations where a model is under identified and the pieces of information that you have are insufficient to find those unknown parameters. However, in this case, it is the case that those loadings and the error variances can be shown to be identifiable based on the observed variances and covariances. Now, Saturated therefore means we're using all the information. We're not reducing the information in our data. We're using it all up. So it's kind of like you have $50 to spend. You go to a store and you buy yourself some nice things and then um, you spend all the $50. Then you have no nothing left over. So there's complete saturation, so to say, of your budget. Your budget is eaten up. And so here our budget of observed pieces of information is eaten up and therefore the model is just identified or saturated as we see it as we say it has zero degrees of freedom because the number of parameters minus the number of pieces of information equals zero six minus six is zero now what implications does this have that the model is saturated and has zero degrees of freedom one implication is that the model fits your data perfectly, so say trivially, as long as you have non-zero covariances between your variables. So if you have zero covariances, then you would run into a problem. If your variables weren't correlated, were, did not covary, then there would be some issues. But as long as you have positive and non-zero covariances, then this model will be a perfect fit for your data always. It might still yield an improper solution. So you might still get, for example, negative error variance if you have a covariance structure that's not in line with the model, but it must fit perfectly because you are using all the information. And so that's one reason why some people feel like we should avoid saturated structural equation models because they are not testable meaning they can't be falsified. So you could never reject such a model unless something else was wrong, like I mentioned before, where the model leads to an improper solution, which could still be the case. So you could still get a negative error variance and a standardized factor loading above one if, so say the covariance structure was odd. Um, so, or if you had zero covariances, then that would also falsify the model because if the variables don't covary, then they can't measure a common factor as well. But other than that, you can't really reject the model for a positive 
non-zero covariant structure. And that's one reason why people say, well, there's not nothing can be tested in the model. And that's true. So that's a downside of saturated models is that they're not fully testable with a chi-square test statistic, for example. But a saturated model could still be useful. For example, if you wanted to find out about the reliabilities of the variables y1, y2, and y3, then this model could still be fit to get an R squared value for each of those. And then that would produce um, a result that you might be interested in. So you might be interested in simply knowing how reliable are these variables and how strong are the loadings for those indicators. And that might be all you want to know. And then you can use this model. Also, saturated models are not per se bad. We use them all the time. So for example, when you fit a standard multiple regression model or a standard analysis of variance model, then those are saturated models. They use all the information in the data to estimate parameters. For example, in a multiple regression model, you use all the information to estimate regression coefficients. And so we would never say that a multiple regression model should not be used for that reason. So saturated models are not per se bad. However, in terms of structural equation modeling, they are limited with regard to testability. So that's one issue. Now, how about when we include a mean structure in this model. So with a mean structure, we would also have three means because each of the three variables, y1, y2, and y3, each has a sample mean. And then we could include the mean structure. However, this wouldn't change anything for the congeneric model because then we would also estimate three intercepts. And so the intercepts then would eat up the means of the observed variable. So the model would still be saturated even if we included a mean structure. How could we make this model non-saturated? There are multiple ways to do that. One would be to impose constraints or restrictions on certain parameters. For example, if we set the loadings equal, so if rather than assuming a congeneric measurement structure, we would assume tau equivalence or essential tau equivalence in the sense of classical test theory where the variables have equal loadings, meaning we assume that they're measured on the same scale with the same units of measurement, then the model would be over identified and non saturated because then we would estimate only one loading parameter, not three. And so in that case, then the model would have two degrees of freedom because we would not be using all of the information in the covariance structure to estimate those factor um, loadings. So that would be one way if you reduce the number of unknowns by including parameter constraints, parameter restrictions, then the model can be made non saturated or over identified, as we say, and then the model would also be testable as soon as it has positive degrees of freedom, you could test it with a chi square test of model fit. However, this may not be acceptable, or may not be reasonable if the variables are in very different units of measurement, then it may not make sense to set the loadings equal. So what would be another way to obtain a non saturated model? If you added more variables, so if you had another factor, for example, with um, its own indicators, and where the factor would be correlated, perhaps with this factor here, then you have a multi factor confirmation factor analysis model where the um, other measurement model provides additional information the indicators that come with the second factor they also have covariances they have covariances with the variables that are here in this model and so then you have more covariances if you add more observed variables to the data even just adding a predictor a manifest variable that predicts this factor f here would already make the model over identified because then that predictor variable, let's say age or gender would also be would also have covariances with y1, y2 and y3. And then those additional covariances then provide additional information above and beyond the additional parameters that such a model would include. So those are ways if you really want a non saturated model to um, change a model from being saturated to being non saturated, adding more variables to the model and or adding constraints, 
parameter restrictions that reduce the number of unknowns in the model. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about saturated structural equation models. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. And I'll see you next time.